It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. It's a Thursday morning. This could not be a more appropriate person to talk on this day about this topic than State Representative Chris Dush. Good morning to you. Good morning. How are you doing, Todd? Wonderful, wonderful. It's good to have you with us, and uh, we want to see if we can't make something uh, more regular with you so we can uh, learn, since you do represent a substantial portion of Indiana County. But this topic that came up yesterday with the lockdown of state prisons has been something on your mind for quite a while. You are a former corrections officer uh, in the prison system, and uh, I know that you've been concerned about this. You had an event, a media event last week to talk about it, Prison guards are in grave danger, aren't they? And ever more now because of this this really insidious drug problem that's going on. Well, it's not just our corrections officers. We have uh, teachers, um, counselors, dietary workers, uh, people who work in the commissary staff, uh, the mailroom workers. The mailroom workers are at the front lines of this uh, on one level. Uh, a lot of the drugs have been coming in through the mail system. Uh, I don't want to describe the specifics because I don't want to give ideas to anybody on how to get stuff in, but uh, they've been exposed. Uh, we've had officers exposed. Um, it's becoming an epidemic. There's also an increase in uh, assaults on staff that have been going on all year. We had one death first time in 40 years. We had uh, Sergeant Bosserman down at Somerset was killed back in February. Uh, we have another one that I've learned of since down at Graterford that uh, I'm not happy with what I'm hearing about the investigation into. So things are getting worse inside. Unfortunately, uh, the staff who work there in all classifications are concerned because up until Uh, Well, we did the event last week. I purposely uh, did not include active employees because uh, the department's got a history of retribution. Um, So I used family members of staff and uh, some retired corrections officers, Mm -hmm. and we described what was going on inside. Unfortunately, Secretary Wetzel and uh, Executive Deputy Deputy Secretary Smeal have not been getting out to the institutions in the way that is prescribed by policy. Uh, So they really don't have a feel for what's going on inside. I'm also unhappy with uh, the lack of response by the unions. I I think there's a, this, the blame for this goes across the board. The legislature should have been holding hearings on this uh, months ago after Sergeant Bosserman's uh, death. the department, the unions, they, they should have been organizing something like I did here last week. But now, after that event, and then the governor uh, coming out and slamming me <laughs> instead of addressing the problems, we've had over 10 more staff members injured, and now they finally have to come to terms with this and actually start dealing with it. After the uh, release yesterday about the lockdown, uh, and uh, all of the ramifications of that, uh, you issued a report saying it just can't be something that is superficial. It is time to do something very, very more comprehensive, uh, a, a very substantial investigation, and, and a really, really thorough search of practically every inch of every prison. This is a almost a moment-by-moment roller coaster for me because the guys, uh, the department says that they're going to start doing training. And I've heard from uh, people in several facilities here over the last uh, several hours or early last evening that they had the facilities locked down and they were not going to uh, start doing the searches until the staff had the proper equipment and the proper training on it. Well, uh, what I then learned was, all right, they're still using the same old latex gloves, which uh, some of these drugs can actually penetrate through those gloves. Uh, I've been told that there's uh, there are senior staff people who have the more per- more expensive gloves that will prevent against it, but the frontline staff are still reduced to using the latex gloves, and it was a very short period of training. So. Uh, it, there are different reports coming in around. I don't have anything solid yet, but uh, I'm 
I'm a little bit disappointed. And to go back to your question, I'm sorry, uh, we have a history in the department that when something happens, they'll do a quick lockdown, and for the sake of uh, looking good, they'll go out and do a search, but they, they're rushing staff through the search all the time with the intent that, hey, we got to get this place up and running again. we got to get it going. we got to get it going. Safety and security have to be the first concern. Uh, many years back, uh, they switched the order of precedence for how the institutions were being run from custody, control, and care to care, custody, and control. They flip things. Uh, you take somebody into custody, you make sure you've got proper control over them and the facility, and then you take care of the needs once you've got that established. They put the care stuff up at the top, and now uh, the inmates have been given way too much. They're running the institutions in a lot of places. State Representative Chris Dashi is with us this morning, a former corrections officer himself, and uh, yesterday the state prisons uh, all across the system were placed on lockdown as uh, it became apparent that uh, there is an, almost an out-of-control problem uh, with uh, illicit narcotics being taken into the prison system. Uh, of course, those go home with the families, uh, too, uh, because the families can be affected by this. Last week in our Indiana County Court, there were three or four inmates uh, who were brought up for sentencing for guilty pleas for uh, assaulting uh, corrections officers. Uh, you, I'm sure, have uh, that sort of experience that uh, you've seen that or maybe have experienced it yourself. Um, talk, if you would, for a couple of moments about how we could keep these corrections officers safe within a prison environment. It's awfully difficult, isn't it? Well, it's an inherently dangerous position uh, and to be employed in. But the people who go into that, they understand it. The problem is uh, traditionally over the last uh, 15 years or so, there's been a decreasing number of prosecutions of inmates. And quite honestly, uh, in some courts, uh, the judges sentence these inmates to concurrent time, which means, all right, they'll they'll get a sentence for the assault on staff, but they don't do any extra time. Uh, those sentences should be run consecutively to the terms of incarceration that the inmates are serving now. Separate crime for separate time for separate crimes, and uh, these guys they say, okay, I can beat up on a staff member and then get away with it, and virtually that's what they're doing. Yeah. We had District Attorney Pat Doherty on the other day. He said the exact same thing. Uh, and it, it really comes down to, as you said, uh, spreading the blame for the situation all the way across the system. There are many, many people uh, who could uh, change things. So tell me this. From a legislative standpoint, uh, is Pennsylvania's uh, Corrections Department, is it set up correctly? Are there things that can be done legislatively to make the situation better, to resolve some of these issues? Well, Pennsylvania's got the proper policies. We've had the policies in place for many years. The problem is, uh, especially under uh, Executive Deputy uh, Secretary Smeal, we have had so many changes to the way things are supposed to be done by memo, basically uh, changing policy by memo and then the staff are trapped between following policy that was set up from over a century of understanding how to control inmates, how to control a facility, how to control both staff and inmates, and be safe for everybody. But uh, there's a tendency now to just go by these fly-by-night uh, memo changes. It is confusing and it's unnerving to staff because if they follow policy and violate the memo, they end up getting punished in some way, either by getting moved into a position that's less desirable or uh, uh, any number of tools that management can use to uh, basically fix the problem with the staff member that's trying to do the thing that uh, he's supposed, he or she is supposed to do. Um, unfortunately, like I said, that. Neither uh, Secretary Wetzel or D 
Deputy Smeal have a real feel for what's going on inside. I have a concern for the number of uh, people that are family members of uh, Deputy Smeal who have been hired and promoted at very fast uh, pace and are now in policy-making decisions, uh, positions uh, with no real background in it. And there are some other things that are disturbing that I'm, before I comment on, I'm uh, going to be doing some more investigation. But uh, I would like to see our legislative branch begin to start using their subpoena power. Unlike uh, the uh, federal government, we have Act 19 of 1842, which basically says that if we compel somebody to show up they, and they fail to show, if they fail to produce uh, testimony or fail to produce the documents that are necessary, uh, the, either the Senate pro tem or the Speaker of the House sends that person to the Dauphin County Jail for a little bit, and then when they bring them back, if they refuse yet again, they go back to the Dauphin County Jail and they stay there until uh, the next legislative session where they're brought back again to repeat the process. Uh, we've got, unfortunately, a bureaucratic system throughout the state, and it's not just the Department of Corrections, where they have uh, contempt for the legislature. I sent a right-to-know request which is really interesting. The, the legislator that has to have yeah. supervisory has to go through that route. I'm supposed to be doing uh, that, not you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, we, I sent, sent it out for the Violence Reduction Committee uh, recommendations, and I know there are certain things in there with policy and procedures that one doesn't want to get out and uh, having over 30 years in security with the military and corrections uh, I understand there are certain elements you don't want to get out to affect the, that would affect the safety and security of the institution but I've seen that report prior so knowing what is in it and I just wanting to have a copy of it I couldn't get it. They sent me, well, they sent me the thing, but it's page after page after page where the whole thing is just one big black block. They blocked the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason, I, the only reason I can infer from that is that they do not want us knowing that they're not following the reductions of their best trained people uh, on what needs to be done. He is State Representative Chris Dash. We're out of time this time, but we need to revisit the conversation again, and we'll do that in the future, I hope. Thanks for joining us this morning. I appreciate it. Thanks, Todd. There's Chris, uh, Representative Chris Dash with us here this morning on The Voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160, 101.1 FM. We're at about a minute and a half away from 9 o'clock Fox News coming your way then, and then we'll follow that with news from our WCCS newsroom with Josh.